<laughs> oh, it's good to see y'all in the Lord's house. We must have packed a pew Sunday with Brother Samuel and his family this morning. I like that. I like that. And I reckon the prize for y'all this morning is me. <laughs> There'll be a booby prize. But it's good to see everyone in the Lord's house this morning. If you have your Bibles, will you take them and open them to the book of Genesis? As we continue our study, we'll be looking at Genesis 18 this morning, looking at verses 1 through 15. And we're going to study on this topic, laughing in the face of God. Laughing in the face of God. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 and following. If you'll read along with me, the Bible says, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, there were three men by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground. And he said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. A little water, I pray you. Uh, be fetched, and you wash your feet, and rest yourself under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of uh, bread from the comfort of your for, and from the comfort of your hearts. And after you shall pass on, the, for therefore you are come to your servant. And they said, So do, and as uh, as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened, Abraham hastened to his tent unto Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly the measure of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran into the herd uh, and fetched a calf tender and of good and gave him to a young man and he hastened him to dress, dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which had been dressed and set it before them and he stood uh, by them under the tree and they did eat. And he said unto them, where is, or they said unto him, said unto Abraham, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to thy time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door and uh, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. And Sarah laughed within her, herself saying, I, after I am waxed old shall I have the pleasure, my Lord, of being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which I am old? Is this thing too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not. For she was afraid, and, and, said, and he said, Nay, but thou did laugh. Let us pray. Father God, we see the story that is before us today, which is the story of the life of a man named Abraham and a lady named Sarah, who were stricken old in years, and yet you had promised way before this that they would have many, many children, and that Abraham would be the father of many nations and many kingdoms. And Father, as we look at the word today, we, I think through the scenario of this story of their life, this biography, we can understand why Sarah may have snickered why she may have laughed. But I would pray today, dear God, that as we look at your word and see especially how it applies to our life today, Lord, that we will see things in a clear way and be convicted to the depths of our hearts about how often we laugh at you and we don't take your word as being the word of God. So Lord, lead God and direct. We ask in Christ's name, amen. And amen. Thank you for standing in reverence to the Word of God. Well, we see the scenario here, and we're, we're kind of journeying along with the life story of Abraham and Sarah. And we've seen over in the Scriptures where God has told Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations. Kingdoms are going to come from you. And, and of course, Sarah was unable to bear children. And you remember the story where she took her handmaiden, Hagar, and, and brought Hagar to Abraham. And Abraham uh, and Hagar conceived and had a child and named him Ishmael. And, and and uh, now they're, they're even older than that. And here's uh, Ishmael is probably around 13 years old when Isaac will be born. And, and um, these men come up to Abraham and he, uh, doing the custom of the time, went to them and begged them to stay with him. And he said, I'll provide water for you. I'll provide food for you. You come and stay. And that was their, their custom of the day. But these were messengers of God. 
And we'll see that later on in the scriptures. Well, they'll end up over in, in Sodom and Gomorrah and some of the things that will take place there. But Abraham did what he was supposed to do. He went and he told Sarah, he said, prepare a meal cake for them. And then he went and got a fatted calf and he said, we'll, and had his, um, his servant to prepare that, that for them to eat. And he brought some butter and honey. So he brought the best. He didn't just bring them a bologna sandwich. He didn't bring them a PB&J. I mean, he went and got the good stuff because he knew there was something special about these individuals. And while they were there, one of them said to Abraham, Sarah is going to have a child, basically. She's going to bear a child. And of course, Sarah being there, the Bible says in verse 12 that she laughed within herself. She was behind the door and, and uh, I'm waxed old and, and I don't have a pleasure anymore. My body won't, isn't conducive to having children. Well, you know, we usually, when we read this story in this scenario, we kind of look down our, eye, our noses at Sarah a little bit. How dare her laugh at our God? We know there's nothing impossible with God. She's 96 years old. Well past childbearing age. But yet God has been telling them all along that, that uh, they're going to have a child. And they forget the, path, the part where God speaks and he says unto them, you shall bear a child when you are old. And if God said it, it's going to come to fruition. And we see there in the scriptures where the Lord said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Basically, is there anything too hard for God? And at the appointed time, he says, I will come again, and you're going to have that child. There's no doubt. You're not going to stop it. It's going to take place. You're going to have this child. But not only do we see here in the scriptures where Sarah laughed in the face of God, if we go back to chapter 17, um, we, we see there in verse 17, the Bible says, And Abraham fell on his face when the Lord had spoke to his heart that Sarah was going to have a baby. And, and he says, And he laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, who be a ninety years old, bear a child? Abraham laughed in the face of God after all God has done for him. After the miracles that God has wrought in his life, the things that he has seen God do. Remember, he went down into Egypt and he was worried about Sarah, his wife, being taken. And he said, you tell everybody you're my sister. And Pharaoh took her in and was going to have her for himself. And God brought some bad things to happen to Pharaoh's household. And he realized, hey, this ain't Abraham's sister. This is Abraham's wife. And I better keep my hands off of her. God protected them because they were God's chosen ones. And over and over, you see where God's done wonderful things for Abraham. And, and Abraham, when God says, you're going to have a child even though you're old, the Bible says he laughed in the face of God. He knew that God could do things. He knew God could do super miraculous things. But Abraham laughed in the face of God. Here in this scenario, in verse, uh, chapter 18, we see where Sarah laughs in the face of God. Now, Sarah was a little bit different than Abraham. Abraham just, the Bible says in verse 17, that he fell upon his face. He just fell out laughing. You ever heard about somebody laughing so hard they almost want to fall down and just roll in the floor laughing? Well, that's what Abraham did. Sarah was a little bit different. She kind of stayed back behind the tent door and laughed. She didn't want everybody else to see her laugh. But what we learn from that as we understand is that you can't hide from God. I don't care what closet you're in, what door you're behind, what, what uh, 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 box you may be in. You can't hide from God. God's going to be there. And Sarah laughed even though she was, thought she was hidden behind the door. And when she was called on the carpet, she said, I didn't laugh. Wasn't me. Well, who else was in the room or, the, or in the tent? Nobody but her. But God told, said to her that you shall bear a child and I'm going to come back at the time that child's supposed to be born to prove to you that you're going to have a child. There's nothing too hard for me, God says. But Sarah denied laughing. I didn't laugh. I like what it says, but thou did laugh. God didn't leave it undone. You see, so very often we'll lie to everybody else. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Friend, you need to know that God knows what you did. And you know, when we lie like that, we're actually laughing in the face of God. And I want to share very briefly with you this morning about some things we see here is that first off, we see that Abraham laughed in the face of God because God said, you're going to have a child. And he says, I'm too old. I can't do it. It tickled him so much. He fell on the floor laughing. 
Then God sends some men to confirm that Abraham was going to have a child. And, and uh, Sarah heard that, and he, she's behind the closed door, and she starts laughing. Now, I don't know if she was going tee-hee-hee or she was laughing hysterical, but she was laughing. Laughing at what God said was going to take place. And then God confronted her and Abraham and said, you are going to have a child and I will come back at that day because there's nothing impossible with me. And Sarah says, I didn't do it. And God said, yes, you did do it. They laughed in the face of Almighty God. Well, as I said before, so very often when we see people who sinful are sinful in the scriptures, we kind of get pharisaical. Well, they shouldn't have done that. Well, I want to share with you some other entities today that, that, are, that are laughing in the face of God. And some of them may kind of blow you away. This one won't, of course, I'm, I know you'll understand this. Not only did Abraham laugh in the face of God, not only did Sarah laugh in the face of God, but I want to tell you today that Satan laughed in the face of God and he's still laughing in God's face. Because he don't care. We sung victory in Jesus. He has no victory. He's already the defeated foe. So everything he does in life is a way to stick it to God and to stick it to God's uh, humanity. And he's laughing at God. If we go to Isaiah chapter 12, uh, 14, we see where Satan was kicked out of heaven. And you see where he basically was laughing in defilement in the face of Almighty God. The Bible says in verse 12 of chapter 14 of Isaiah, art thou, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which thou uh, weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. This is what God is saying to Satan that, you, that he said he would do. I will exalt to the throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon Upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend into the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most high God. Satan just bowed up himself and he started laughing in the face of God and said, I'm going to be higher than you. He said, God, you think you bad? You made me the archangel, the most beautiful angel in heaven's glory. I'm going to outsit you. I'm going to be better than you. I'm going to be all of that. And God says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. From the very inception of time when, when however it worked out and no one really is assured in their hearts and knowledge about how sin actually came about in heaven in the heart of Satan, but it did. And he got so cocky, he started laughing in the face of God. And not only did he laugh in the face of God at the beginning, he's laughing in the face of God right now. And he has since time began till time is now. He's always been laughing in the face of God. He knows that he's a defeated foe. He knows that he would be cast into hell for eternity. But yet he is still laughing in the face of God. And I really believe that every time a lost person dies, he laughs even louder. I believe every time someone dies without the Lord Jesus Christ, Satan looks up to heaven and God, and he says, ha, 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 I got another one. And I can just see the heart of God breaking because man would choose world and self and the pleasures of world over the, the preciousness of God. And Satan just laughs, I got another one. And you know the funny thing is, but it's not really funny, is the fact that Satan will gain more than God will gain as far as taking people away. There are more people that will be lost than more people that will be saved. And every time one loses the battle, every time one falls from victory in Christ, and every time one turns to Satan and dies, they physically die, Satan laughs at God. I don't know about you, but that makes me angry. Hello, y'all out there? Does that make you mad? It ought to. It ought to make us get up and go tell people about Jesus Christ. We ought to be the one laughing in Satan's face instead of him laughing in our faces. Not only does Satan laugh in the face of God, Satan laughs in the face of the church because he knows we're not out there doing it. We become so lackadaisical, so self-centered that we don't even depend upon the power of God anymore. It's just like having church. I shared yesterday an inter -church, intercultural church conference in the Savannah Baptist Association and preaching on church revitalization that right now in the state of Georgia, we have over 3,600 uh, Georgia Baptist churches, so, so, uh, Southern Baptist churches, and out of those 3,600, over 70% are plateaued or declining. And Satan's laughing in the face of God. 
Instead of being on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ and being in a revival spirit and just being sold out for God, God's church is just flatlined or dying. And Satan's just laughing. I got them right where I got them. I got them fighting over, uh, over what type of worship service to have. I've got them fighting over the fact they don't like what the preacher preaches. I got them fighting over the fact that the preacher and the deacons don't visit enough. I've got them fighting over every little thing in life. And, and I've got them all tore up. And he looks at God and says, and that's your church. Ha, 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 ha. Makes you want to smack him one right in the name of Jesus. Abraham laughed in the face of God. Sarah laughed in the face of God. Satan laughed in the face of God, and he's still laughing in God's face. And you know something, folks? We need to understand that we're part of the reason for allowing him that opportunity to laugh in the face of God. And we need to step up and stand up as believers in Christ. Oh, but not only did Abraham laugh in God's face and Sarah and Satan, but I want to tell you, our world is laughing in God's face. Especially our country. Hello. The United States of America is laughing in God's face. I put on my Facebook this morning that, that, that as far as that goes, it's when we turn our back on the teaching of God's word and we become disobedient to God's word, that's when we're laughing in God's face. And the United States of America now, with what they are doing, 17 states have now voted in same-sex marriages. They are laughing in the face of God who says that's an abomination. And we're sitting back on our Christian laurels and saying, oh, that's such a shame. <laughs> well, I've never. Well, it's coming down fast. And we better recognize it. And we better stand up. And we better be accounted for. Our world is saying what God says is abhorred. They're saying it's an alternative lifestyle. Our world today is saying what God says is an abomination. Oh, it's just a fad that people are going through. Divorce rate is rampant, and God said he abhors divorce. You know what's sad? Is in our world today that every, uh, I think it's 55% of first-time marriages end up in divorce. But in Christianity and evangelical Christian life, 62% of first-time marriages end up in divorce, and we ought to know better. Now, if you're divorced, I'm sorry that you went through that, and I know it can be like a living death, but friends, that's not what God intended. It happens, but that's not what God intended. And I'm sorry if it caught up in your life and it's caught up in my family's life, and we've all had to deal with that within our families, and we see it, and you may have, have had to deal with that personally. And I know when you went through it, it hurt your heart. And while your heart was broken, Satan was laughing. But our country is laughing in the face of God. And it's a shame. When God says, thou shalt not, the United States of America is saying, thou shalt. It's okay. Friends, if you don't realize that we're in the battle of our lives as Christians in the United States of America, you need to wake up. Amen. When they're trying to say that you can't even share your faith in the military because it's, it's a hate thing. You better wake up. We've seen all the scandals very recently with the IRS and how they have, were, were uh, going against conservative entities and, and, and doing accounting against them and so forth. Friends, that is nothing more than Satan laughing in the face of God. You think these entities are strong and they've got cons uh, conservative Christian backgrounds? And Satan just laughs. I got them. I got the IRS eating them up. And watch what happens. I'm afraid to say that probably not much is going to happen. Oh, there'll be some people lose their jobs. But I guarantee it's not going to change. It's going to get worse. You see, when stuff like that crops up, you watch sooner or later it'll become law. Watch what happens. That's what happened with abortion, did it not? Huh? Abortion was illegal. It was contrary to the teaching of God's word. And Satan is sitting back there laughing that he's killed more than, the, than were killed in the Holocaust through abortion. Right. We're probably one of the, the men who, in my opinion, was a whole lot worse than Hitler. This doctor up there in Philadelphia who was killing all these babies after they were born alive. And they only convict him of three? When he's killed thousands? 
And Satan is laughing in the face of God. And he was laughing in the face of God. And our country's laughing in the face of God. And friend, the world is laughing in the face of God. Do you realize, if we were to think about some of the eastern countries, such as Japan and, and China, and, uh, and you think about how with all the eastern mysticisms that they believe in, that less than 1% are Christians. Less than 1%. We would say, well, we, we kind of understand that. Do you realize that the In the European countries of the, uh, of the world, Spain, France, Italy, where the gospel was brought by the Apostle Paul, less than 1% are Christians, evangelical Christians. Our world is laughing in the face of God. Where the Crusades went for the cause of Christ and, and, and to override Islam, they're laughing in the face of God. But not only does, did Abraham laugh in the face of God, not only did Sarah laugh in the face of God, and Satan did, and he still does, and our world does it. Friends, I want you to believe this. Don't take this the wrong way, but it's absolute truth. Today, God's church is laughing in his face. When we can't take this Bible, and we can't believe it as the holy, inerrant, authoritative, sovereign, living word of God, and we can't stand on it because we're afraid we're going to upset somebody, or we think that our opinions are validated more so than the Word of God, we're laughing in the face of God. When we think that we are better than God and no more than God, and it ought to be our way or the highway, we are doing nothing more than laughing in the face of God. When we become disobedient to the Scriptures, we laugh in the face of God. When churches say we're going to do it our way, we don't care what the Word of God says. We're going to allow for same-sex marriages to take place in our church uh, properties, and, and we don't care if our pastor does that. And when we, get, we contradict the Scriptures and we allow things that we know that are absolutely wrong to appease the group so we have some peace, we are laughing in the face of God. And I will tell you unequivocally that I know with all my heart that when we stand on the Word of God and we cling to the Word of God, it doesn't matter who it makes mad, it'll make God happy. But I want to tell you today, churches are laughing in the face of God. They, are, they have just as soon take this book and throw it out. There are some denominations have taken the blood songs out of the hymn book because it's gory and offensive. Well, I want to tell you, if Christ had not shed his blood, we would not have the opportunity to be saved. We can't be saved within our own merits. And when stuff like that takes place, they are laughing in the face of God. Real encouraging service, isn't it, this morning? It's just truth, folks. It's just truth. Abraham laughed in the face of God. Sarah laughed in the face of God. Satan did. Our world does. God's church is laughing in his face today. Instead of aligning with the word of God and saying we are not going to bow down, we are not going to bend, and we are not going to break, we're going to stand on the truth of God's word, and when we don't, we're laughing at God. But not only does God church laugh at God, but we do too. Why? Because we are the church, but yet we are also individuals. And friend, when you decide that you're not going to obey God's word, you're looking up at God and saying, ha, 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 I know better than you do for my life. When we, we walk not in faith, but when we walk by sight, we're saying to a holy God, ha, ha, I know better than you do. I don't trust you. For the future. I don't believe what you're telling me. I don't think your will's right for my life. And we just laugh in the face of God. When we don't go out and lead people to Christ, when the Word of God says we're supposed to do that, when we ought to do it, when it's, that it's our responsibility and our obligation as believer, we're telling God, you can't do it. Remember what God told us? Uh, told Abraham and Sarah, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for me? Well, God, I can't do it. I can't get out there and talk to people about Jesus. God says, you're laughing in my face because I said you can. My dad used to have a saying that kind of answered that. 
He said, can't, never could, won't, never would. It's not that you can't, it's that you won't. You won't give it a try. When we go contrary to the teaching of God's word, when we are lack of faith, when we're, when we're not believing, we're laughing in his face. Some are laughing openly. I have seen it in church, churches after churches. I've seen it in individuals' lives. Just the lack of faith, the unbelief. Didn't care who heard it. When phrases or statements are made in churches, well, we never did it that way, preacher. And it's not the Bible way. They're openly laughing in the face of God. When we come together for church conferences and when feelings are heard and preferences rise over the teaching of God's word and anger arise and people get mad with each other, you're really laughing in the face of God instead of doing it God's way. But I also want to tell you this, just like Sarah, there are many today who are behind closed doors laughing in the face of God. Many of you will take this message home today and you'll think, I can't do that. I can't get up there and sing. I can't teach. I can't, can't give. I can't do. I can't, I can't, I can't. It's not that you can't. It's that you won't even try. And nobody else may never know, but God knows. And you're laughing in his face. Y'all know that I love humor. I love to laugh. But one thing I never want to be accounted is laughing in God's face. I want to be counted as a man that loved God, that trusted him, that had faith in him no matter what. It doesn't mean I'm so strong spiritually that those doubts don't come. They do come. There's, not, there's those times in my life when I probably do live contrary to God's word. When I think I know best. And you know, I can tell you without any doubt that those have been the times that I failed and fall short of his glory. But when I look at this and I look at Abraham and I look at Sarah and I, you know, I kind of, kind of feel bad about them laughing in God's face until you put it to an application to our lives and the life of our world and the life of God's church. Satan's going to laugh. And the only way we can stop him from laughing is have victory in Jesus. The only way we can change our world from laughing in the face of God is that we stand up and be accounted for. And that we stand on God's word whether hell comes against us or what. We're going to stand there, thus saith the Lord. And we're going to let them know that men and women of God have been there and stood firm. But i tell you what breaks my heart worse than anything else is that God's church is laughing in his face. When we say we can't do it, we're saying, God, you don't have the power to do it. When we say we're going to do it our way, we're saying, God, you don't know enough to do it right. We know better than you. And that can be said for a church. That can also be said for us individually. And when we don't have the faith to believe that God can do what God said he wants to do or can do or will do, we're laughing at him may not seem that way. We may not intentionally be laughing out loud, ha, 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 but behind closed doors, the closed door of our heart, we're laughing in God's face. Friend, if you're not saved today, if you don't have an intimate love relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, right now at this moment, you're laughing in the face of God. But I want to tell you, God can save you. If you'll relinquish your life unto him and surrender your life to him and accept what Christ did on the cross as a payment for your sin debt, you can be saved right now and your laughter won't be laughing in the face of God, but it'll be a laughter of joy. But if you think life is so sweet and sin is so sweet that you're willing to go to hell for, you're just laughing in the face of God and you're saying the death of Christ is null and void for me. Well, friend, it's not. There's nothing impossible or too hard for God. He can save you right now if you'll surrender your life to him. Believers, what are you going through in life? Some of our church family are facing cancer. 
going through cancer, surgeries, diabetes, dementia, Alzheimer's, congestive heart failure, all the physical aspects. And friends, I want you to know that God can heal. Brother Alfred, what was it, about three months ago, four months ago, they called us in for Miss Eva. Said she won't make it through tonight. And she's still chugging along, isn't she? That's our God. That's our God. No matter what you're facing, friend, don't laugh in God and say it's impossible. Look to God and say with God all things are possible. But where are you in your Christian life? Are you one who laughs at God openly? Or are you one who laughs at God behind closed doors? You can't hide from him. Sarah thought she could and God called her on the carpet. Are you laughing at God today? I hope you're not. But I'm going to tell you I have. I probably will again. But I hope I don't. I hope I don't. I hope I trust him to the infinite degree. I hope that I'm completely surrendered to him in all aspects of my life. Because I don't want to laugh at him. I want to have joy with him. Are you laughing in God's face today? Let us pray.